Welcome or welcome back to the Lockwood Chronicles. My name is Larissa and today we have our November wrap up. Off, um, I am getting over a cold, so I sound even more congested than I normally do. This month, for November, I read 10 books. I just love reading, and I also listened to quite a few audiobooks this month which helps a lot. I have, I have a really long commute. Um, when I run out of podcasts, I throw on an audiobook. Hmm, what do we start with? Let's just go down the list, how about? This was a pretty good reading month for me. My average overall rating for the month was 3.92, which is good. You know, any, like, three is when I'm like, I like a book. And four is, I really like a book. And then five is, I love a book. <laughs> and two is like, it was okay. And then one was like, not at all. Um, I don't really ever give my ratings. If you do want to ever see my ratings, you can follow me on Goodreads. But even then, it's not accurate because I give a lot of like quarter, halves, whatever, as well as I tend to be a higher rater in public places because it takes a lot for an author to write a book. And unless I absolutely hate it and think it's trash, which I'm a pretty easy reader to please, don't really ever give books a one star. Let's get into it. So the first book that I read, which feels like forever ago, I finished up reading The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. It's a thriller and it is about Alex who has had kind of a bad year. Currently suffering some writer's block. She's also going through a really big friendship breakup with her best friend Ren. Just isn't very motivated. I have a hair stuck in my eyelash. Hold on a second. There we go. She also just like isn't very motivated in pushing herself to become an author. Um, she just holds back. So she's in this job that she absolutely hates. Through her connections, she ends up being able to go to her favorite author's really exclusive, really private, writing retreat at her author's manor thing in upstate New York but it's also like you're not allowed to tell anybody about it it's super secluded there's no internet there's no cell service like there's zero external communication with the outside world also the manor is rumored to be haunted which is super eerie cool kind of great for this setting four other women typically attend this retreat however they had a spot for one more so there are five women on this retreat there is some paranormal activity but not a lot there was a lot of predictable twists if you're going into this uh, especially if you're a big thriller reader, you will not be surprised. I read thrillers, but it's not my go-to genre, and I was not surprised really by any of this, and the paranormal aspects kind of felt random to me. I wish we would have got to explore that more, or even if there was a book, same premise and everything, but it had more of that paranormal aspect. That would have been really cool to see, but I really did enjoy this thriller. The next book that I read was Magnolia Parks The Long Way Home by Jessa Hastings. I really won't get into this too much. It is the third in the Magnolia Park series. It is the second in Magnolia and BJ's point of view, and this is just following up with their their shenanigans. Rich people drama in high society London. We get to finally see why December 3rd is such an important day for Magnolia and BJ. And we also get to see a lot more with Julian. And I love Julian. <laughs> he is adorable. He is one of the POVs in like the Daisy Hates side. The ending though, what was that ending, Jessa? Miss Jessa, Miss Hastings, what was that ending that you did to us? Because, oh my gosh, I did not see that coming. I really hope it is, it is nothing because that was, I was in shock with that ending. I was very upset with that ending. So we'll see what happens with that. We only get one more book of BJ and Magnolia's POV. I mean, their books just destroy me. Absolutely love the series. Really didn't think I would just because I do not favor toxic relationships, but this one, it just, the writing is so beautiful and it just captures me, but it's just like people vibe in. There's not a whole lot to the plot. It's just more character driven. Then the next book that I read was on my Kindle and that was Night Shift by Annie Crown. This was about Kendall Holiday and Vincent Knight and it's a college romance star basketball player with quiet book worm nerd girl. Kendall works typically the late night shift at her libraries. They, they're open 24 seven and she prefers to do the late night shift, especially on the weekends, more of the party. She doesn't really like to go out and party or whatever. One of her night shifts happens to bring in Vincent and Vincent is wearing a cast and he's super grumpy and he's the star basketball player of the college. He asks for Kendall for a book recommendation so he can 
write his essay about some poetry that his English class and he doesn't understand poetry so he asks her for her help. They end up having like something real steamy happen in the bookshelves. <laughs> this felt very insta-lovey to me and anytime that happens I try to pretend like there's a lot of time in between going on but it was very much insta-love. They only spent maybe or interacted I should say three or four times with each other and Kendall would say he's always doing blah 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 and the like cute sweet things and I'm like girl you don't know him you don't even have his phone number what are you talking about he's always doing this the bare minimum interactions with him to not establish like a baseline that really bothered me <laughs> they do like do some cute trope dissection in here so such as the miscommunication trope they make fun of like oh we miscommunicated we can't be the miscommunication trope and then they miscommunicate again <laughs> like we just talked about this two seconds ago what are you talking about but I did enjoy like those little trope discussions it was really cute it was fun it wasn't anything serious I felt like it could have been more developed it just felt like it was lacking or just didn't it felt like a rough draft maybe like a second draft I feel like it could have really enhanced a lot of stuff, really created a really great foundation for something, as well as just seeing more of the on-campus and like the spots and locations, especially about this bookstore. I, I wish we could have like had that developed. It was, it was fun. It was cute. And then the next two books that I read, I listened to on Libby, and that was Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead, and then Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Casamano. And these are the second and third book in this cozy mystery series, and I just really love all the shenanigans she gets up to. So the first book uh, we see Finley, she's like a cozy mystery thriller author. She's meeting with her book publicist at a Panera. She's like, I don't know how to kill this guy, blah blah blah. And somebody mistakes her talking about this thriller that she's trying to write as she's actually a hit woman. She gets hired to do a job and just like all the circumstances and everything that follows is just so funny. <laughs> so this is just kind of following up. There's a hot cop, a hot student lawyer. She's just a woman going through a divorce. She's short on cash. She has two kiddos. Her ex-husband is the absolute worst, but I really enjoyed the narration of these books, listening to them via audiobook. I thought they were just so fun and entertaining. Also, the relationship and friendship that she has with her nanny or her accountant is just so wholesome and just they're such a great team. There's actually a novella spinoff with her and then we get the fourth book. I believe in February so I'm really looking forward to getting both of those. The next book that I read was Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros and this is the second book after Fourth Wing in the Empyrean series. I loved it. <laughs> this is a romanticy however this one really focuses more on the fantasy aspect of it. There's not as much romance in it as Fourth Wing. I mean Fourth Wing gives off like Divergent, Hunger Games, uh, Harry Potter, like it's a school of dragon writers and this one definitely follows up very well but definitely develops that war-like mindset and just setting everything up. There was a lot of like jaw-dropping moments in this. I really really liked it. Yes it was different than Fourth Wing. I think Fourth Wing was really easy to get into. It read very well and I, again, I'm a romance, I love romanticy and again that one had a lot more romanticy elements to it but that being said I do love fantasy elements as well and this one had a lot of that. There was just um, more, I, I love the dragons. We definitely got more dragons and they are so sassy and I love the sassy dragons. These are the best written dragons that I've ever read and I love them. Each and every one of them. I think they're so well I love the main ones <laughs> and yeah I just love them. I just love what they bring to the story. If you haven't gotten into this I would recommend it. Again there was a lot of jaw dropping moments. I still can't believe the ending. I am so excited to see what the rest of the series has in store. It's supposed to be a five book series and I kept saying like I felt like this would have been a good trilogy. I see it now. I see that this could be a longer series so I'm looking forward to all five books. <laughs> then because I was in kind of a slump after reading Iron Flame we read something- uh, we. I read something that uh, from an author I was very familiar with. I really like their writing style. They're just really fun, cute, sweet and that is Allie Hazelwood, Check and Mate and this is her YA debut romance and it is not YA at all. It is new adult. There wasn't any open door scenes with like the sexy stuff. It still read a little bit more adult to me. And this is about Mallory and Sawyer. And Mallory, she is an ex 
chess player. She stopped playing chess when she was I think 14 years old due to a circumstance that happened with her father that we don't find out until later on in the novel. Sawyer on the other hand is the world's top player. He's a grandmaster in the chess chest chess world and uh, he is also known as the bad boy of chess and he's super hunky and all of that. Mallory's best friend has to compete in this like charity chess tournament and she's looking for a fourth teammate. She begs Mallory to participate and she's like I know you don't play chess anymore but please it's because I got a scholarship blah 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 and they're she's Mallory's 18 so there's 20 so again new adult age. Mallory ends up going. She ends up getting paired right off the bat with Sawyer and ends up beating him. He hasn't lost in years. Then she gets offered a spot to, she gets paid to play. Like, I don't know. She currently works at a garage uh, and is treated terribly there and then something happens. Guess what? She ends up going to play chess. Her mom, she's also supporting like her family, which is why she has that crappy job. Her mom has a chronic health condition and is unable to work full time and she has two teenage sisters. She has a lot of guilt placed onto her from like what happened and like why she needs to be there for everybody and the supporter to everybody. So it is also examining like family dynamics and being a teenager but also having to take on those bigger responsibilities and when is it appropriate and when it's not. I really loved it. I read it very fast. I also listened to the audiobook with this one which I thought was absolutely wonderful. I listened to it on my Spotify premium membership because you get 15 hours of listening time on audiobooks now and I love that. I thought it was a quick read and really enjoyable and I absolutely loved it. Then the next book that I read was The Spells Love by Kate Robb and this was like just a cheesy little cute rom-com. I'm nothing too serious or crazy and this is about Gemma and she has just gone through a breakup. She has a kooky aunt, a sister, and her best friend Dax and her kooky aunt says hey let's let's cast this spell that I just found in my book like witchy shop thing and we'll see what happens because apparently it erases whoever you're trying to forget and she has to do a platonic kiss with her best friend and when she wakes up her best friend does not remember her. She just seems to be in an alternate reality where uh, different circumstances would have happened if she never had met her ex. She is struggling to try to get her best friend to remember her or not even remember her but become best friends with him again. Um, I didn't really realize that this was going to be like an alternate reality. I thought it would have been like she's still in her everyday life and he just forgot about her. I don't know why I thought that. Anyway, but because she's in this alternate reality, stuff starts going wrong and she has to try to get back to her own world. Yeah, I would love to be friends with Kate Robb though. <laughs> she seems delightful and I just enjoy her. Also, I just love the donuts on the cover. Then next up, I read, <laughs> I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and look it, I got the sticker to come off because my mother, who is a saint, got me some goo gone. <laughs> And I'm so excited but now there's like a little grease stain up in the corner so that's always lovely. I read this. I really really loved it. This is about Addie and Addie makes a deal with the darkness aka his name is Luke. Starts off in like the 1700s and she just wants to belong to herself. She wants to live her life on her own terms. She doesn't want to just like get married and have babies and just be forgotten by society. She wants to live her life for herself. Luke strikes up this deal. You have to be very careful with your wording because uh, he ends up making everybody forget who she is as soon as like she is out of their sight as well as she can't say her name or like give any personal details about her story. Till we meet Henry almost 200 years later and Henry is just so delightful. I love Henry so much but he's going through his own stuff too but he can remember her and that's where the story kind of goes from. Also there's some tension between her and Luke. I got so flustered reading about him. He's so attractive sounding. Him and Henry, yeah I got a little giddy and it uh, just goes to show. They have green eyes. All the red flags are ignored. <laughs> I know a lot of people this is a really hit or miss book for them. I was given the instructions to listen to it and so I listened to half of it and like read half of it and I think I would have enjoyed it either way. Um, I really did like the audio narration. The narrator puts like a little French lilt to Addie's accent and I really liked that. I, I really liked it. I know again it was very hit or miss with people but I really really enjoyed this book and I continue to think about it 
a lot actually. The last book that I read this November was The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. I did partially listen to this until I ran out of listening minutes on Spotify. <laughs> this is Britney Spears' memoir. First of all, she owes us nothing. I said that so many times in my reading vlog with this, but she owes, owes us nothing. She gets to live her life how she is. She's out of conservatorship. I compare a lot of these types of memoirs to Jessica Simpson's. I feel like hers was just very open, raw, and really left no details out. This was a lot shorter than I was anticipating. Every time I felt like we were getting somewhere, we would switch stories or switch like it wouldn't it wasn't in depth with how again she doesn't need to go in depth a lot of this stuff is most likely very triggering for her to have to relive and talk about it was really heartbreaking to see because i remember all of this happening and everything that went down about it and how the media was so horrible to her to paris hilton to lindsay lohan and like really painted them in a horrible light when they were just women in their 20s and 30s just trying to live their life just the way women were treated in the media back then and even still now it's not as bad as it was but it's still pretty bad it was heartbreaking she was silenced for so long and it makes me nervous that this wasn't as detailed as it could have been. Just on the back end, I'm like, is she still being silenced? And that always makes me nervous because she didn't read this. Michelle Williams did a great job. Ah, it just It just makes me nervous. Anyway, it talks about like how abusive her team was, her family was to her, and how they just used her for everything that she had. And she was in the, the conservatorship first and foremost, is to protect somebody who cannot protect themselves and is unable to function in order to live their life fully or like make decisions for their daily lives especially regarding their health her father was her conservator or like the person in the conservatorship and she brought this up too and she said you know if i was so sick why was i writing an album why was i touring why was i doing a las vegas residency if i was so sick to be in this conservatorship why was I working myself to the bone under this conservatorship? And it talked about the finances, um, how her father, how much he paid people, and how she's very confused, and as is the world, as to like why her father was put in charge when he was he's an alcoholic. He had so many failed businesses and was in debt. Everything that happened with this was horrible. I hope this helps people that are in abusive conservatorships find a way out and have everything re-examined to make sure that people are actually getting the care that they need instead of being taken advantage of because she was taken advantage of to the max and all she wanted to do was spend time with her children and be a mom and have a family. Everybody was against her for that. I'm, I'm very happy that she's out of that. She gets to live her life, but there's definitely a lot of trauma that comes along with that. And also, I know I said this in the reading vlog, like, there were some points in the writing where I'm like, this just feels super young. Like the writing just felt young, the thought process, it just felt like little girlish. And she even commented on that. She's like, in order for me to survive this, like I would switch into like a little girl way of thinking and then it was okay. But then the woman in me would come back and be like, no, whatever. And so she would have these mind shifts of different age groups that was appropriate for her to be living. It was just wild just crazy wild stuff i really loved this memoir and i hope she just gets to live her life in peace and how she wants to these are the physical books that i read this month out of the 10 books that i read and like i said it was a really good reading month and we're in book miss we're doing 12 days of book miss here so follow along and i hope you enjoy it i mean we'll just have some fun little activities and whatnot throughout the month and three videos a week for the whole month not just until the 25th we're doing our best um so hopefully you stick around and enjoy and if you do want to stick around subscribe to the channel that way you won't miss anything and feel free to like this video for external validation for me i appreciate that and respect others respect yourself and do something amazing with your day thanks bye